What's up everyone? My name is Abhi Sarkar. I am a, a wedding and portrait photographer based out of Philadelphia. Uh, I am fairly new to the business side of things, but I have been a wedding photographer for over four years now. Um, and I've always loved the idea of sharing knowledge and experiences uh, through videos and other Facebook communities. So I think uh, that's why I wanted to do this video. Uh, please forgive me, I'm pretty new to this. So if I make any mistakes, um, however, today, as you can see, I had shared this image uh, in this group uh, earlier today and a couple of you had uh, requested of uh, more information about how I did the uh, removal of the light stand uh, so, uh, in, in Photoshop. Uh, so let me tell you one thing first that there is no one way of doing this there are multiple ways of doing this uh, what I'm going to show you is what I say as a quick and dirty method uh, more on the quick side than the dirty side uh, I choose this to do because this is, was a more of a fun portrait shoot uh, so if uh, if this was a commercial shoot or uh, even something which is going to be printed or at a size larger than 8 by 10 I would be more careful might even choose a different uh, slightly more uh, intricate method of cleaning up the image uh, however you can see how I do this um, so I one thing I try to do when think when I have control more control over my time as well as how I am shooting I try to place my model as well as the light stand in a way where cleaning cleanup will be much easier than in other sides. All right, so for example, in this case, if I had the mag box for some reason on the right and overlapping with this dark uh, bushy area or this uh, other side on on the left, it would be a lot more difficult for me to clean up mag box. Uh, out of out of the image uh, however I made sure that it's placed uh, right in the middle of the sky portion so it's much easier like that as well as you can play around with placement of the model and your shooting angle to make this uh, post edit uh, much easier and quicker however I will be honest and I will uh, also confess that often during a shoot uh, I might get carried away. I'm so excited with the images I'm getting that I don't pay attention to these things, uh, which just means that there's more work cut out for me for later. Uh, and sometimes I'm just lazy to make the changes because I don't have assistance for these kind of shoots. Uh, so I'm not able to move things around that easily. It will take me more time. And if it's during a wedding day, that's usually the scenario there where I really don't have the time to make that changes. But I'm confident that there is a way, always a way to uh, you know do the edit in Photoshop later. So here I will show you quickly how to remove. The goal is to remove the light stand cleanly and blend it in with the environment. So uh, I find the easiest would be the spot healing tool right here, uh, the spot healing brush tool, and work with that using the content aware option. So. Uh, I, I have a loop deck uh, control uh, editing console which helps me to control my brush size like this uh, and so basically what I try to do is I start with the edges take a little bit more than the object itself and here we go just paint over it And give it a few seconds for it to process and you see most of it is done so now what you do is because the way content aware works is it uh, there are settings which you can change and I'll be honest I've not fiddled around with the settings a lot uh, where it samples and how far it samples from where what you select uh, but in this case it's, it's an easy fix because it's just a blown out sky uh, that I need to check and it is just it goes further away from the object and takes samples from there and replaces the content here so in this case all you have to do is pay attention to what you have here and just take it around as a whole then just go like this cover it 
So that's that and then go down on the sides to, to work on the light stand. So I'll go section by section. So I will not make a selection of the entire light stand in one stroke. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it the algorithm works in a way where depending on what you select, it will, it will sample uh, the pixels from around your selection. So if I select more of it, it is doing the, it is sampling around the entire selection, uh, which makes it uh, make mistakes. So if you just go down the light stand, take a little extra, especially with this kind of an image, it's very easy to do. It's even easier with my next image. And so I go to the fence area separately because it's a different color light is different slightly so I'm not the most happiest with this finish so I will go a little bit in and then again this part okay here we go one more little part for the fence so I pay attention when it, when you're looking at the fence here uh, I'll try to pay attention that uh, the continuation of the fence, the line here, uh, although it doesn't have to be a perfect straight line, it has to be a believable uh, dimension. So it can't suddenly skew uh, towards left because of your uh, spot healing tool. So I'll continue this right here to this part because it's dark and then it gets light. So you see there is a key little light left here line left here so i'll correct that take this part a little separately and then again this part in the sand separately i won't say that i know exact reasoning but i know that taking smaller samples using the spot healing and the content aware option gives you a better result and also if you make a mistake and you want to go back a step the smaller the step sizes are the smaller changes that are it's easier to undo and move back on your edit and to be very honest this is pretty much I take out a few dark spots here which I know which I can notice that these are remnants from the edit but trust me uh, a viewer will not know that there was a light stand here for example I can see right here a little little line here so I got that out of the way and that's pretty much it and that's how I will edit this one uh, if I am not happy about certain portions like if I want to spend more time on it I will spend uh, let me see spend more time on this area right here and try to blend it a bit more because it's kind of distracting to me and i know the edit is the lighting was right not like this right here so i will change that uh, but other than that overall i'm pretty happy with this edit and i would use this as a final result it all depends again as i said in the beginning itself on what you are doing with the final result if you're going to print it big yes i would really go into the pixels and look at the alignment of all the pixels and try to make the edit as clean as possible if it's a commercial shoot definitely if it's a wedding client and they order a print which is going to be big i will take the effort if it's not uh, i will i know if they're going to use it just for small prints or the social media uh this kind of edit will i'll be happy with it uh, i know everyone has a different opinion about this but uh you know the time is valuable so again that was one and i'll come back to this one later but again i want to show you how a different situation can be different i realized in the previous one uh, we had uh, greenery bushes uh, lit by the sun there was a fence and the sky uh, so e different color palettes in this in this particular image that you're on the screen right now uh, it's even easier actually so if you just take the spot healing tool, I will go make my brush much larger. And because it's a uniform sky in the back, I can, I'll, uh, let's try and see, but I'm pretty confident that if I use a large brush and just take it as a whole like this, it'll do a pretty decent job. Give it a few seconds. 
Oh, oh, I was wrong. Sorry about that. But you know what? This should fix it. Let's see. Not bad, right? So just go down, reduce the size. Maybe I will change this. I will change this. Now if you notice, this section has sampled from a lighter part of the image. So let's see if this corrects this. Yeah, that's pretty close. I mean, I can see these lines. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video. But let me first correct this. Make changes here. That's pretty good. And then the rest kind of blends in with the dark. So I'll do this section separately. Might even actually burn that area a little bit more and make it darker. But then this section separately. Here, I think this should do the trick. Now, when you're doing an image like this, pay attention on the sand or on the surface it's standing on. If there's any shadow left behind of the light stand or even your modifier, a couple more turns and you know, a couple more uh, brush swatches, and it will be taken care of. So there you go. Almost there. So it's not perfect because if you actually zoom into this region, you will see that uh, it uh, is pixelated and blurred out compared to the sharp sand here. So this is where I will use a little bit of uh, cloning maybe, you know, do a little bit like this light touch light cloning and go a little bit this way it's easier because it's sand if it was some other surface it won't be as easy but again this is for demonstration purposes i think this is pretty good uh, again if you zoom in a little bit here you'll see the the change it's not always visible but i can see it because this was the this is where i ran there this is this is where i will to a little bit of light cloning and just make the make the more the image more believable uh, that's about it so this was much easier than the first image but however still uh, we had a few cloning to be done so it all depends on how you place and what what uh, is the surface now this image I will not be doing the complete edit um, I have uh, shared the finished product uh, in the group before. I will not be doing the complete edit, but I just want to show you that I wanted to sh uh, want you to see the uh, complexity of it. So it involves uh, a lot of cloning, uh, healing tool, as well as uh, replacing stuff. This chair had to be removed, uh, and this I will I'll be very honest. This was a product of me being. Uh, a little lazy, a mix of little lazy because this was at the end of the shoot and I was a bit of laziness, a bit of uh, tiredness and I saw this image come together. I got so excited that, oh, this looks amazing straight out of camera. I can't believe how, how good it looks. Um, I didn't even notice a few distractions. I had to remove the chair from here, these bottles from there. Once I removed my, I didn't get a plate shot or something distracted me at the, right after this shot uh, at the venue and I couldn't get a plate shot. A plate shot is something basically what you do is since uh, the guy holding the, my assistant holding the light stand is in the frame, uh, you take one shot like that and you take another shot where you, the only thing that changes, you don't change your position, you don't change your elevation angle of the camera at all. Uh, the only thing that changes is the light is out of your frame so you are supposed to ask the uh, assistant to move out with the light stand so your you most probably end up getting just an ambient exposure uh, at the same exposure as your uh, ocf shot uh, but that you can use as source of your cloning 
when you are merging these two images uh, in, in Photoshop. I even forgot to take a plate shot in this case. Uh, not forgot, it was more difficult because there's a lot of stuff right behind my uh, my assistant here and he couldn't move out that far out that would actually help me but uh, since we are talking about let me see if I can share the final image show you the final image I've shared it before in this group so here it is this is the final image I left the bottles in part of the story and took the chairs out burned a lot on this side and then you know cloned in on the door and this was a final image but between uh, this and that you can see how much it's a lot more work so this is a more uh, more complex tutorial but I just want to show you the difference of uh, using just the spot healing tool and getting it done uh, so the idea is I really wanted none of you to be scared to do this kind of uh, shot or scared to do this kind of edit. Uh, the closer you bring your light stand, especially if you're doing a portrait like this one, if the score closer you bring the light and the modifier uh, to, to the uh, subject, the more wrapped, uh, a more softer light you get, the more wrapped around light you get. So it's definitely recommended. Uh, don't overpower your light only because you are standing at a distance. Just bring it in, even if you're shooting alone, which is the case here, I was shooting alone. So uh, just bring it in, put a sandbag on it, it'll be stable, uh, get a nice quality of light, uh, and then Photoshop is your friend. Uh, and if you want to do even better edits, uh, I don't know if you know, have seen the news uh, in the Adobe world, they just uh, released a few extensive updates right today. <laughs> One of the best parts of that those updates is Lightroom Classic now has a separate, a different icon. It's called LRC and that helps a lot. That helps a lot and they can finally differentiate between Lightroom Classic and the Lightroom, uh, the cloud version. Uh, anyhow, that's besides the point. But uh, they, uh, I haven't tried the updated tools yet, but uh, for, what, for what I read, uh, they have introduced uh, a much more AI intensive uh, selection tool which can even select on the, uh, even the hair, uh, the strands of hair of your subject uh, without too much effort. So yeah, if you want to go even more uh, in-depth uh, removal of light stands, uh, de uh, depending on what you want to do with the image, uh, you can use other tools. Basically, it's the, the idea will be you select it even more uh, fine. Uh, do more fine selection of the object and then once you remove it fill it in with uh, better uh, cloning and other techniques so that's a quick uh, just wanted to show you quickly uh, that this thing is very easy to do and you can achieve these results very easily um, I hope you like this video uh, and it helps someone out there uh, if you do I will appreciate if you leave a comment, let me know. I'm trying to do more of these. I have a few ideas that I want to share. So if this does help anyone, a little comment, uh, uh, go subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can uh, see more of the, these comments, uh, these, sorry, these kind of content. Uh, as I said, very new to this. So hopefully uh, this uh, helps you to get over the fear and go for the shoot and go for that splendid image you have in your mind. So keep shooting, keep practicing, uh, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, let me know, feel free to reach out. Uh, I love the community, so I love sharing. So, all right, till next time, cheers.